do three, but this is the first time the Cubs have had three players win the gold glove in the same season ever. Um, what does that tell you guys about what you guys were able to do as a team defensively and, and where you guys stand that place? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think from the beginning of the year, it was something that was pretty well covered. Just, you know, that was a team that as a team, we were going to be really evaluating, evaluating um, run prevention. And so, uh, we, you know, whether we got the awards or not, I felt that our team really did that beyond the three of us. And so to get recognition, you know, um, you know, feels great, especially with the goal in mind, but um, so many other guys that were contributing to that as well. Yeah, really cool. Anytime you can be a part of Cubs history like that first to do something's pretty special organization has been around a long time. So there's a lot of credit to a lot of the other guys that run the field every day playing with us, but cool to be the ones that are part of it. Nico, uh, what does it mean to win your first gold glove award? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really, really special. I think, you know, got the thrill of seeing, seeing Ian win his first last year and didn't know Dansby yet, but um, uh, yeah, just seeing uh, it's so much time that goes into that and um, people that help along the way. I mean, I especially think of, of my dad and just like the time that he spent with me, just the endless ground balls and, and whatnot. So um, a lot of really great, great people that make things like this possible and cool to get recognition for it. Ian, too, we, we asked the other two, what, what does it mean for you to be able to do this and, and do it now two years in a row? Yeah, just super, super special. You know, when the first one was was really awesome, but to be able to back it up with another one um, and, you know, have that on the resume, I think that's uh, a really special thing to be able to do it in Wrigley again um, and and twice in a Cubs uniform is, is a pretty cool thing that I'll cherish. Ian, we, we talked about early in the year the – the advanced metrics or whatever it was weren't uh, weren't grading you out as a as a great defender in left field and you weren't pleased with the way things were going what do you think changed what did you adjust anything what happened there uh yeah I don't know if I uh adjusted a ton I think sometimes you just got to play it out um definitely throwing help this year threw a bunch of guys out Nico made a bunch of really good tags at second base and um a couple guys at home that were that were big um kind of in that June July uh, August stretch. Um, and I think that was, that was a big part, you know, last year, uh, I ran balls down really well. And this year I threw the ball really well. And, you know, sometimes that's, you're going to have those opportunities and not the other ones. So I think that's just kind of how it shook out this year. Ian, you've seen Nico since he first broke in and seen him kind of prove some people wrong at shortstop and then willingly move to second. Just what have you thought of Nico's kind of career path and to kind of get to this point? Yeah. I mean, not everybody gets to see how hard guys work behind the scenes. Um, you know, obviously we lived together uh, for a point and have spent a lot of time together and, and been together playing for a long time and to watch the work every day, to watch how dedicated he is to go out there, take his ground balls, how much he cares about it. You know, him and Andy Green and Moda out there every single day. Um, and then, to, you know, to watch how well he played shortstop last year and then to make the transition over as smoothly as he did. They're similar positions, but, I've never gotten to play shortstop in the big leagues, but I have played second, and I know that they're they're not the same. Uh, and so he spent a ton of time this spring working on the pivot at second base, working on making the, the different delivery, the backhand flip. Like I know how much he put into it, and so to see him be honored uh, and and the respect that goes along with that, um, as deserving as he was, it's really really cool. And I'm very much looking forward to being in New York and watching him walk up on that stage and hold the trophy. Kind of along those lines for Nico and Dansby, we knew that coming in, you guys would be a pretty fearsome up the middle duo, but what did it take to get there and make that a reality? And uh, Ian, what was it like getting a view of that partnership coming together? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is like, and uh, Happen just alluded to is just the work, right? The work that gets put in um, and the more that you, uh, put in that work and then obviously the communication uh, factor uh, growing in just our relationship in general um, you know our friendship and and growing as teammates really really helped because it started to should understand like questions to ask answers to give like how to ask things how to pick someone's brain like 
it's not just as easy as saying like, oh, well, where do you like want your double play feed? You know, because it's different from different guys. And, you know, and when he goes transitions from short to second, like he may be comfortable with something else. So you got to make adjustments. And it's like this ever evolving thing. It's not just as simple as like, oh, this is like we just became good. Like the individual stuff happened. Yeah. Like we worked our butts off to be able to be good in that regard. But the the camaraderie and the chemistry, you know, takes time and and will only continue to get better as uh time goes along yeah i mean i think we talked all of us talked a lot in spring you know about our expectations and what we're doing to get you know used to playing together and you know all that stuff and obviously we were given our best at that time too but there's really no teacher like the game itself and just the things that come up at game speed and in big moments and um, you know, sometimes it comes from a mistake or whatever it may be, but I think we did a nice job of just continuing to develop and just trending the right direction as the year went on. And um, yeah, that part was really satisfying, especially knowing that you know, I'll be playing with Dansby up the middle, hopefully for a while here. And then obviously Ian out there as well. So I think kind of the, the long-term perspective is also another part of this that's really, really exciting. And um, yeah. They were definitely fun to watch. Uh, you know, I got great views of, of Dansby's plays. There was a bunch of bunch of hard hit balls in the six hole that I thought I was gonna have to come in and field and before you know it, he's flying in front of me and make a throw from his knees. So that was that was pretty impressive. There's a lot of times where me and Talkman or me and Belly would just look at each other after a play that these two made and just a little, oh my God, uh acknowledgement between the two of us. So um fun to watch and look forward to to watching it for the next few years. We have any other questions? All right. I love everyone's efficiency. Dansby, Nico. Oh, go I, ahead. I, I, yes, had one, go. Yeah, I just got to my hotel room. Sorry, guys. Um, did you, uh, Dansby and Ian, uh, or Dansby and Nico, did you guys enjoy playing without the shift and the new rules at, at, the, at the end of the day and being able to make more plays and stuff? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it just gives it a much more just kind of like natural feel for – like what our game's supposed to look like. Um, like there's a reason those two positions have always been, you know, premium, you know, defensive positions uh, in the game's history um, and being able to, uh, you know, kind of just it almost kind of give each other like a gut check on terms of just like understanding baseball and understanding how to anticipate uh, where balls are going to go and, and how to make adjustments. And I thought that we did such a good job of that, um, communicating that to one another. Um, and, you know, just kind of like always being in each other's ear about like where we're where we're wanting to be um, to be able to maximize, you know, our range. And, uh, you know, he's Nico so good coming across the bag, like it afforded me the luxury to play um, and, and cut off more balls in the, in the six hole. Like it was like kind of he he basically had he he would uh, the like my forehands, essentially, like he would be able to cut down on those. So I could worry more about the balls hit at me or to my to my right. And um, I feel like that just made a huge difference um, for our group, um, you know, defensively and preventing runs. But yeah, at the end of the day, the shift, uh, I wasn't necessarily sure how much I would like it being gone just because I just don't think that you should be told what you can and can't do in terms of like how you want to play your defense. But overall, I think it improved the, improved the sport for sure.